everybody, please welcome Daniel Mark Young. Hello. So, what we're going to do is, Daniel, please, for anybody who doesn't know you, just tell them a little about, just a little bit about yourself. Um, well, yeah, about me. Well, you pretty much said it. Director, producer, um, recently, more recently, uh, dabbled with writing. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, between 2015 um, and now, we've pretty much been making short films um, under our production company, Viral Films UK. Um, we've made four or five, maybe six short films. Um, over the last five or six years and uh, we are now currently in production on our first feature film which yourself uh, are somewhat involved with to a very to a small degree but we'll talk about that in a bit um, yeah we we primarily make horror movies uh, we like to try and do things a little bit differently and that we try and uh make things that we've either never seen before or try and tell a story in a way that we've never seen before so we try and take a, a kind of unique ish perspective on on making movies and telling stories um and story is always the primary thing what's the story we're going to tell um we start with that we don't just go well let's make a horror movie and let's just cover everybody in blood and run around and film it and we'll make some kind of story around that it's it's always a story first so that's the most important thing um and then yeah just trying to tell it in the most interesting way we can and try and make the best film we can for whatever money we've got which usually isn't a lot yeah so what actually got you into horror in the first place um well growing up you know, in the sort of late eighties, early nineties, you know, and just generally watching a lot, consuming a lot of TV and film and stuff, you kind of I had quite a healthy or unhealthy, depending on how you look at it, diet of kind of horror movies. You know, so you name it, I'd probably seen it at that point, and I, well, you know, I probably shouldn't have been, but you know. You know, back in the days we you know used to rent movies at actual brick and mortar stores. You know, um, yeah, it was, it was just you know one of those things. Really, we just always had a lot of horror movies around, and just you know, I kind of had free reign to watch whatever I wanted to. Yeah, you know, so it was just being exposed to that kind of era of movies. A lot of sort of cool stuff coming out, a lot of B movies, a lot of horror movies, and I think what ultimately kind of drew me to saying you know when it comes to the filmmaking side of things i want to make horror movies because i just think they there's a lot more there's a lot more areas to play around with um story wise and and do a lot with because i think if you're gonna make like an action movie your audience kind of knows roughly what to expect from it like if you make a drama or a romantic drama or something like that you know you kind of know what you're gonna get and so with horror, you know, again, going back to sort of just renting stuff off the shelf, you know, looking at a cool bit of artwork and saying, yeah, I'll we'll watch that tonight, you know, um, you never knew what you're going to get. So, like, with horror, it's it kind of that. I know we've got subgenres and everything like that, but, you know, yeah. you can have, like, a film that's like a real slow burn kind of movie that's more sort of on the dramatic side, but then turns into a horror movie in the last act which is kind of a little bit like for her which we'll watch in a bit um well you know you can have on the other end of the spectrum you know a total bloodbath from scene one sort of thing onwards you know so you're never really sure yeah what you're gonna get and that always you know it just seemed like a more sort of a bit more of a fun playground to to play in than you know I don't know. I still enjoy action movies, and I still enjoy you know the odd drama or whatever here and there, depending on what it is. But you know, from a filmmaker's perspective, it's just a lot more fun because you know, yeah, I get to flick blood at people, and you know, yeah, all that kind of stuff. You know, stuff you don't normally do in your day to day life unless you're a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't be. You can't be a big blood splatter. Uh... And to be covered in it, I'm guessing that's going to be one of the highlights of any horror film, I would think. I, I get quite jealous parents, of our actors. 
Yeah. Did your parents kind of encourage you into this field? I don't know necessarily it was intentional. Um, I know, I know. Again, having a lot of kind of movies, like we had a re- ridiculous collection of films at home, um, and we also had like a lot of books. I remember there being, and, I, and I'd love to track it down. There was a book of like makeup effects stuff, like cool stuff from like back in the day, like you Dawn of the Dead's all the way through to sort of the sort of mid eighties kind of where prosthetic effects and stuff like that practical stuff was a real big thing um and i remember reading looking through that and thinking wow okay this is this is how this stuff's made this is like it's way more interesting than just like you know a nor like any any other kind of type of genre of movies you know there's all this stuff that goes into it and all these people that work behind the camera I remember being a very young age you know thinking well I'd, you know that's just something i'd like to do i'd like to be behind the camera and you know you just make these kind of films and just it just seemed there's something really intriguing to me about it but i don't think there's necessarily anything they pushed um you know i don't think any parent really pushes that on to their kids but there was, there was it was just like the material was there so it was just like i kind of i gravitated towards it a little bit That's yeah big props on your respect because you took that initiative yeah. To get from day to day life and normal jobs to. I, th- I think it was like, it's, it's one of those things because obviously growing up as a kid and that, like, the, pr- the prospect of making a film was like, it almost seemed like the inachievable, you know, like, you know, the only sort of cameras we kind of had access to were like VHS or very tape based, standard, they very, you know, unfilmic like cameras. And so obviously we'd shoot stuff, you know, messing around with friends and stuff, shoot home videos and stuff like that. And, yeah. you know, it was always just naff, just terrible. But, you know, it was always fun to do. Um, but the idea at that point, because, you know, film was still film, it was still shot on film, it still cost money, so let's have a film camera, you know, um, they cost a fortune. But growing, obviously, the older I got, the more I went to my teens, I actually realised, you know, the digital revolution in terms of filmmaking came along. And ever since then, it's just made filmmaking so much more affordable that it means we can now, we can do what we do now. We wouldn't, like 10 years ago, or 15, 10 years ago, we would not have been able to do what we do now. Um, it would just be impossible yeah. on, on the money we've got at least. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of cool that it's sort of all worked out that way. Cause I feel like, you know, if that digital, I, mean, I think film, I think for people growing up now who want to be filmmakers are quite lucky really, because it's just that much more possible for them to do these things. Um, and the, the tools are just there, you know, they're not, they're so easy to sort of get hold of now. It's not, you know, there's no, the barrier for like entry in terms of making films is just quite low now. So it's easy for anyone to just kind of pick up yeah. and, you know, people shoot films. I mean, you shot a short on your phone, you know, and that's, yeah. and people have actually shot movies that have gone to like Sundance and things like that on mobile phones and legitimately had them released and stuff, which, you know, you, go back 10 years that would have just been people would have just lost their minds over that the whole idea of it you know yeah yeah every, everything seems a lot more accessible uh the equipments it, you know you can get the cheaper equipment and you can work your way up but the, the, the main thing behind it is obviously the script the writing and then the actual then putting it into motion so there that's the hardest bit but like you say for the equipment and everything everything's quite easily accessible now uh, did you ever think about doing acting or was you primarily just focused to be like behind the camera um i think i think like we, we did drama in high school or secondary school and i wasn't that great at it i think i realized there and then it was like yeah this kind of that that side is definitely not for me i think i made this a very clear decision to say yeah we'll try we, we, we really want to try and do that behind the camera stuff rather than in front of the camera stuff um so yeah it's not something i particularly seek out or want to want to do I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've got like a very small cameo in for her. I have no lines. I literally just walk across screen. Um, 
and it's yeah like, that's about the limit as in terms of my acting but it was like around that time i was about to leave school and you know it was obviously something i wanted to do but i didn't really know where what to do next because it just wasn't like these all these opportunities or anything available at the time but then i found that like if there was a college course where i could learn to sort of do a little bit of what i wanted to learn um it was focused on all kinds of different aspects from everything from like journalism right free to filmmaking so it was just kind of like it kind of covered a little bit of what i wanted to do and spent two years on on this course to try and and it wasn't film school but it was the closest thing I could get to. Um, and so I, that taught me a lot about just generally shooting, a lot about sound, a lot about editing and things like that. And I'd go in on like my days off and stuff and just go, right, I'm just going to grab one of the cameras, we'll go shoot something, and then we'll spend the afternoon like putting it together, editing it together. Um, and that was quite an interesting thing to be able to actually go through that process and learn about it firsthand and it was funny because to begin with when i first started doing that it was literally vhs tape to vhs tape and you had like a console in between and it was just and it was right at the time the like digital editing came into it so around the time that like probably halfway through um learning this stuff like they got a digital editing suite put together as well so it was like well okay we let's learn that let's learn adobe premiere let's learn whatever software we can to throw our films together let's see what we can do with these computers so it was again days days that i was supposed to be like either at home or doing something else i'd be in there be like oh, i'm just gonna sit in here and edit some footage together and that's just kind of like teaching myself how to use it because they didn't actually know how to use it either like the cheaters and stuff they're like oh this digital thing's the new thing we'll just jump on that bandwagon we've got the funding let's get you know three or four computers in and yeah. we'll figure it out as we go but i think in the end we ended up teaching them more about how to use it than, than they knew so so really you've taught you basically taught yourself filmmaking skills basically yeah i mean don't get me wrong there was there was a little bit of like well let's let's watch this movie let's study it let's break it down let's see what works what you know why is it shot this way why is it edited this way what why is it sound this way you know that kind of stuff so there was a lot of um there was a little bit of that like but not as not as sort of like as much or as in it wasn't all filmmaking it was just about you know we did stuff where we shoot live stuff like studio based stuff and things like that as well so but it was all experience coming into the filmmaking and like obviously you're doing your own thing now who's was your biggest inspiration to be because obviously you do behind the camera so did you have like an inspiration that helped you sort of like you know it's like i want to be like that or you know, it, again, it was kind of interesting because growing up and watching movies, like at, at that sort of age, like we're talking around sort of seven, eight, nine, ten years old, up to the sort of teens, those sort of times, you didn't really necessarily pay attention too much to like who worked behind the camera, you know. But then obviously, the older you, you get and the more you start getting into that whole idea, that's this is what I want to do, you start paying a bit more attention to that kind of stuff. So, through like the teens through into like when i started doing college and started to try and like actually make my own thing um you know it was there was a lot of like romero and carpenter and dario argento and but these are like these are like people that sort of basically are they're in the classic horror directors from that era like that i'd grown up with so you know um yeah i mean there's like i mean there's loads i can't really pin down to what it's like it's the same thing as saying oh what's your favorite movie you know i think if you can actually answer that question you don't watch enough movies that's what i always say i've been asked that a lot oh, what's your favorite movie I'm, oh, you know <laughs> it's like you know horror movies right yeah i get asked that question a lot what's your favorite horror movie i just about all of them <laughs> yeah i mean don't get me wrong like if, if I, I was asked it recently and i think like the the main answer i'll give is like the exorcist because let's be fair of all of all the movies the classics that i've watched uh, it's probably the one i've watched the most you know um i can i can kind of 
you know, I can watch that whenever it doesn't, I don't have to be in the mood for it. It can be like, oh, it's a Tuesday, let's put the Exorcist on, you know, whatever. It's, it doesn't really, you know, where some films I feel like I have to be, oh, I'm not really in the mood for that one tonight, you know, whatever, I'll watch it in other time or whatever. But, you know, but no, I don't, I don't really have a favorite movie. Even, even some of the bad horror movies I've watched, and I'll say I liked them because it was just the way it was, to, you know. The fact that somebody's even put it together doesn't really matter if they took the yeah, time. Yeah, to I think, I think there's, you've got to understand everything has its place, has its merit, you know. Uh, there are movies that I've, you know, that are just painful to sit through. But, you know, the, the thing is somebody cared enough to make it you know and making a film is like it's not easy it's not easy and it's not and it's not always fun you know so blood sweat and tears went into it and you know people like say now you got you know everyone's a critic you know the internet and everything you know it doesn't take long for something to come out and people to slate it and say oh this is terrible you know and then the word gets out but you know that that is it's quite harsh you know, but entertainment is is what it is now. It's totally different to how it used to be. People consume things differently now, so it's sort of everything's kind of just there, piped into your living room. So, and don't get me wrong, I've, I've done it too, where I've, I've sat down and I'll go, "Oh, this film looks great," and I sit and watch, and I go, "Oh my god, that was terrible," you know. But like, I don't. I'm not. It's not a diss towards anyone that was involved in it. It just, I know sometimes things don't always come out. The vision doesn't always come out how you want it to you know um and that's that's the trick i think that's something like i any any filmmaker now i would say like it, you know it's good to have that vision obviously you can't really make a film without that vision but it's very difficult to actually get that th those images from inside your head onto the screen for other people to see in the way that you want it to and it's that's really it's really tricky to do. It's the hardest part of filmmaking, to be honest. Um, but if you can live with the fact that, you know, there's a very high chance that you have, you have to kind of compromise a little bit with what, you know, what you're doing, you know, it may not come out a hundred percent the way you want it to, you know, it's, yeah. if you can, if you can accept that fact quite early on, I think, you know, it just helps. You know. Yeah, um, and every, everybody's got a budget, and sometimes, you know, it's not all all about budget. But some people have a budget, and it just they don't know. That, you know, they sort of like they know how to use it, but they use it in the way that they could have done it better. Yeah, it's, it well, took the time to make it. This is the thing with budgets. I mean, it's the financial side of filmmaking is our the bane of our existence to be honest because obviously you know you need money to make things but we know, you know there's never enough and you know we've the two the two main short films that we funded uh run we we wanted to i think originally the budget for it was about a grand and we ended up making it for about 500 quid at a stretch um so we had to sort of you know compromise a little bit on certain things with that and then for her which we'll watch later you know the original budget for that was close to three grand and i think in the end we made it for about 1400 quid which was ridiculous you know it was almost impossible to do it but we we managed to sort of call in a lot of favors and kind of go right you know we don't want to compromise on what we want to do too much here because it's quite conceptually it was supposed to be a certain way and we wanted to make sure that we didn't sort of dumb down the idea too much or compromise on the vision too much and kind of keep that how we wanted it as best we could and obviously the money's a big side of that thing so it's sort of we had to be very careful how that money was spent and you know if we can sort of yeah. get a favour pulled here and there, we'd do it, you know. And it was quite surprising we were able to make it for for what we did, really. As a director, have you had any really tricky actors? <laughs> yes, but we can't really talk about that. Yeah, I mean, another lesson I learned 
quite early on is just be a hundred percent sure that your actors know exactly what you expect from them. Well, think and on the other sort of side of things, we've been quite blessed as well, really, because we've worked with some really great, talented people. Um, and it still, you know, surprises me today. Like, you know, some, you know, some of the talent we've worked with, and we were lucky enough to work with, and who've actually, you know, because again, you know, an actor, some some actors are, are, you know, able to just pick and choose their roles and not, you know, and turn things down. And the fact that they've like come along and gone, oh, you know, read your script and you know, or audition for it, say, oh, it sounds interesting. Then they read the script and then they're like, oh, this is really good or whatever. And the fact that they are on as on board with the the whole thing as you, you know you want them to be is quite an amazing thing. So, but we've worked with, yeah. you know, some actors who are like really into horror movies and that's what they want to do they want to be in this genre they don't you know there's a lot of people we've worked with a few people we've worked with aren't as keen on the genre and would rather be doing other things you know it, it does show you know with their kind of how they are on set with everything and it also shows like in the performance a little bit as well after the fact you know you can kind of tell perhaps they didn't give it their all or perhaps they didn't care enough about it and thought well it's a paying job so i'll just do it and then i'll do something i want to you know try and concentrate more on things i want to do but yeah we're lucky that we've been we've worked with people who um really want to do it and it's like well you know now we get to cover in blood is that cool and they're just like let's go you know those are the sort of people i love working with because it's like yeah. um well i mean Der derek nelson who's been in quite a lot of stuff actually we worked with him on for her just before his first proper horror film came out so we worked with him and then he did a film called cabin 28 up in wales and i think he's over the last four or five years since we made for her he has just skyrocketed he's become like the kind of go-to guy for like the kind of indie B movie, like horror, UK based horror stuff. So he's he's probably made about thirty or forty films. You know, he makes about four or five a year easily, and he's always being rehired by the same directors and stuff like that. He was amazing to work with, nicest guy you'll ever meet. And you know, any chance, any time we get a chance to work with Derek, well, we're we're going to do it because he absolutely loves what he does. And like I said, it's he's the sort of person you can go. Right, well, it's not scripted, but we're going to try and do this thing and see if it works, or we've got these ideas and we're just going to throw some blood about it. And he's like, yeah, fine, do whatever, you know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love I love working with people like that. Yeah. Well, so that brings brings me on to, like, obviously, it doesn't come under the question for future plans because we actually, we actually, we actually some people don't know, but you are actually working on a new film. That's correct. So if you want to tell people a little bit about that film without giving away too much yeah so we our first kind of feature film which we're halfway through shooting at the moment is called into the black abyss death stream and it's kind of like a found footage slash pov style um horror film where uh, it's primarily around a online streamer who, who basically plays video games every night for his audience and a group of masked individuals, let's just say, they break into his house and it, this whole thing unfolds where he live streams the whole thing and it's trying to him trying to escape and, you know, get away you know without them <coughs> catching him or whatever you know they don't know he doesn't know what they're there for they're just going to rob him or you know anything like that and it turns out that there's a lot more to it than that because well, again what we like to do is try to take something that seems like kind of a simple concept like on the ground level and then build kind of more complicated layers of things on top of it so there's a lot more going on than, than i'm actually alluding to here but the basic sort of gist of it is you know it's it's a dude with a camera running around his house trying to evade people that are trying to kill him, you know, and that's if, that's really me boiling it down to its basics. But there's a lot more going on than than I can really say at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what what's the people will probably be asking when it's probably going to be released and where it's going to be released? How are you going to release it? 
Yeah, well, we did a uh, Indiegogo for it last year. Um, around September, October time, I think we started that. We did a like a um, proof of concept trailer for it because we we found that like in the past it was hard to really sell a lot of the ideas and sell how we were going to present the film. Um, so we shot that and we shot it very quick and very dirty and it's just a very sort of small representation of what we were um, what we're going for. So we did that, we got the funding free and we've also had an investor and we've shot, but obviously we did that, we got the money together and then COVID kind of um, hit and we kind of had to sort of delay everything by quite a bit. So originally it was supposed to come out this October in time for Halloween. Um, but that's not how, that's not really possible. We're actually on a break for the summer now, and then we're going to start picking up the second block of shooting in October. And the hope is that we actually get it shot and done and finished by next March. So March, 2022. Um, that's the hope in that. And that's when we're going to try and get it out to people who have pledged on Indiegogo and who've got their, um, cause we're only sort of doing it digitally at the moment. There's no physical release planned for it yet. We may do something in the future. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we're covering that. So the aim is to get that done by March so that people who've helped fund it can have a digital copy of it to watch in their home. Um, as for, um, when everybody else, anyone else can watch it. I don't know. I mean, we were talking about getting it on Amazon prime. That would be the sort of easiest, quickest way to get it out to people. But I've also had, a, I've also had somebody come up to me sort of in the last few weeks and said, Oh, you know, the idea is interesting. We like what you're doing. We've seen some of the behind the scenes stuff. There may be sort of like, an, we may be able to work out some kind of distribution. I don't know. It's, it's a case of just seeing what happens. So we'll get it out to people. We'll try and get it. We're going to try and get it into festivals and just see what happens with it. But obviously, if all else fails, um, Amazon, you know, it's it's we have a love relation hate relationship with Amazon a little bit, but it is it's the yeah. easiest way for us to get our movie out there is to try and self distribute it through Amazon. Um, but if we ever do like a physical release, we'll we'll find a way to sell it and get it out to people. I don't know. We haven't really thought about that yet. Yeah, well. Look- I for one, you know, I back with I back that project anyway. Yeah, yeah, cheers, man. Unbiased, unbiased opinion it would be. I'm looking forward to it, and obviously I have, I do have another vested interest in as I'm actually going to be in it, uh, which some people were trying to kill me off in the comments. <laughs> when we spoke about it <laughs> yeah well I, I it's one of those things because like again like yourself obviously your your interests fall in line with ours and you know you've been like you've been really supportive of our work so i was thinking to myself i was like look you know come on, we, we can we can get other people involved in this you know because the whole again it was it was tricky because of covid and things like that we had to go through a lot of training and certification to be able to shoot a film while still in a pandemic it was difficult I mean, don't get me wrong i'm not going to mind about covid because obviously a lot of worse things have happened through throughout that and just kind of you know other than our little film not getting made on time you know i'm not going to mind about it it's you know, not worth it but like um yeah just like i wanted to try and get people like yourself involved in it because it'd just be kind of cool for us to sort of you know work with you but i know I, as soon as i mentioned it to you like oh that's on my bucket list so yeah definitely you know yeah I, i'd love to i really want to kind of like say more about it i probably can but it's just also don't want to spoil it for people yeah but we it, yeah. you know we, we've got a you know our main actor matt is great you know we're treating it like it's <clears throat> although we're trying to shoot it on you know a fairly sort of pro consumer camera we're trying to make everything look like it's it's a live stream and kind of set up like that and all, all the projects that we'd sort of put out there we never really had we never did the whole proof of concept thing but we felt like you know other people would start doing that and it was really helping them to kind of sell the ideas of what they were trying to make um and so we were just like going into this we needed it we ne- we knew we needed it because i think a video of us just standing again 
so this is the film we want to make but we can't tell you too much about it and then but then trying to explain like to everybody how we were going to present it to people as well as you know other than the themes and the story and character based stuff you know is the the whole sort of the the concept trailer kind of does a lot of that for you so it just kind of it felt like it just did it did a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of getting across the idea very very quickly to people because again people that are like looking for things to fund or happen to be on indiegogo or kickstarter or wherever you know they'll look at a project and go oh they'll click on it and maybe watch like a, a 30 seconds of like the pitch video or whatever you know and if they don't like the look of what they're on they'll move to something else and so i think like us trying to get in there with the, the kind of a, a trailer of sorts was a, a good idea and it kind of helped sell it i think because if it's just us stood there going yeah so we've got this idea and uh, <laughs> you know which is what our other pitch videos pretty yeah. much were you know and it was worse before her because again with that there's a massive twist that we couldn't even talk about so and the twist is the horror aspect of it so it's like so yeah we're making like a, a sort of romantic drama but it's not really it's it is a horror film but only in the kind of last act and there's a twist but we can't talk about it it's like give us your money <laughs> it doesn't really work you know <laughs> so yeah like having going into this knowing that actually story-wise and what we're trying to achieve is actually a lot more complicated than it looks on the outs on the outset you know um it kind of like yeah we we needed this trailer to be able to kind of do that but again we had no money to make it with and we had no time to make it because it was a case of like shit like we need this trailer like this week let's all get together and kind of shoot like kind of moments from the script when we had the script already done it was like it was done it was finalized it was like okay let's just cherry pick moments from it that would kind of work in a, in a trailer yeah. form like literally that opening bit where he's talking to camera that's literally the first scene of the film that's the first stuff on on the page you know on page one um but then it's like a quick clip of this a quick clip of that and then it's like murder 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 well you know um which we had to again there's yeah. so, there's more there's way more complicated stuff in the in the final thing you know stuff that we even kind of amazed that we're able to try really even attempt on this kind of budget you know and it's kind of interesting that we kind of wrote it sort of before covid happened but it has a lot of i think it's going to be interesting because it's going to kind of mirror a lot of what's happening and what's been going on over the last few years it's kind of weird that we didn't you know obviously we didn't see it coming but if you look to if you look quite deep into the script and stuff you know some of the themes and things like that actually you know it mirrors a lot of what's happened you know, he's stuck in his home you know and and things like that it's you know so it almost seems like we've riffed off of events but we haven't really because it was written beforehand um but there are other themes within the film um the kind of the idea of how fragile celebrity is you know like the idea of celebrity and pe we put people on a pedestal that maybe we shouldn't you know people that again i'm not naming names but like people that like don't have a lot of talent you know <laughs> not you buddy not you but people like you don't you know who, who get famous for doing something stupid or like you know not really doing very much all right fair enough no. <laughs> but you, you know what i mean though like people, you know and so just the idea that and again especially in the last however many five years you know all it takes is like for someone to put out a tweet not even now it could have been a tweet from five years ago someone discovers it and then their career is ruined we play around with the idea of how fragile the idea of celebrity is as well within this a little bit so there's lots of little ideas and bits and pieces going on you know but again it's not stuff that you'd get from that trailer as such you know um yeah yeah so I'm looking for I'm looking forward to it, and um, not just for the fact that obviously you've invited me to be part of it, because uh, obviously I wasn't part of it when I first backed it. So I, for one, am definitely looking forward to it. Again, we've 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 got such a it's such a small crew that I work with. Um, it's just always nice to bring in other people, even if it's just to play a bit part or walk on camera and you know stand in the background or something. You know, it's just nice to have 
um oh because again very small company no money <laughs> um we can barely afford to pay for like catering and like things like that and you know you pay your pay actor we pay our actors but like it's you know we just about manage that um you know so it's it's such a small team it's pretty much myself um michelle who's like our producer and sort of slash cinematographer james who used to write for us but doesn't anymore he's sort of more um a producer now than anything he, he does help us with a bit of script stuff here and there and um yeah just like it's pretty much us three um and then my buddy chris he helps us just with anything else that needs to be done and whoever else happens to be sort of knocking around who help you know that's that's our crew really it's such a small team i'll finish up with like just tell everybody your socials where they can get all the uh, then the you know, the indiegogo and stuff like that and yeah so um primarily i'm on i'm on the usuals you know the facebook's the twitter's the instagrams uh if you just search for daniel m young all one thing that, that usually helps you'll probably find me there um yeah and other than that at viral films uk um if you head over to our youtube page all our short films are on there lots of information about our upcoming feature film into the black abyss death stream uh, there's a couple of production diaries that we've already shot as well that you can sort of see a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff of what we've already done um and then what else uh mine's gone blank yeah yeah we've got a twitter for viral films we've got an instagram for viral films facebook viral films and the indiegogo we've got i think is still going i think it's on in demand at the moment and again you can still go on there look at the project see what we're doing there's two perks available and one of them i think it's four pounds just to get your name in the end credits which is pretty good value and then i think it's eight pounds if you want to do that and then get sent a digital copy when the film's completed which is hopefully march next year everybody who's in the chat i'd just like to say thank you to daniel for coming on and talking and i really appreciate the fact that you took your time out of your day especially no worries the bank holiday weekend that's all right no cheers for having me on i mean we, we, so, we've been trying to sort this out for a little while you know it wasn't sure which weekend it was going to be but no i appreciate it i know i know you usually do these on a saturday but today was sort of easier for me to do but no i appreciate coming on and that and like i said hopefully thanks everybody that's watched and hopefully it's been somewhat informative and hopefully i'll have us back on again at some point yeah definitely awesome yeah nice meeting you guys and thanks again yeah cheers right we'll see you later <laughs> Uh, yeah, all right then. Thank you very much, Daniel. Appreciate it. No worries. Cheers, man. Right, take it easy and I'll um, speak to you all soon.